Okay, guys, um, at this point, after the mid-semester, after the mid-semester, um, I haven't uh, graded the uh, midterm exam yet, so maybe next week, next Monday, okay? And um, at this point, after the mid-semester, we'll uh, go on to a, a different topic, okay? And today, we'll talk about speech and thought representation. So look at how uh, people's speeches can be represented in different texts, okay? Um, and today, my goals are to cover the basics of uh, speech and thought representation. In other words, we will talk about direct speech and indirect speech. And I will introduce the patterns and features of um, direct speech and indirect speech today. Okay? So, um, there are like maybe five. Uh, patterns of speech representation, speech and thought representation. So we'll talk about how uh, one person can report another person's speech or can report another person's thought. So whatever is said and whatever is thought in the head. Okay. So we'll see how uh, people can report uh, whatever is said or whatever is thought. So there are five patterns also, um, about five patterns that we'll look at. So um, beginning from direct quotation, direct speech, um, up until summarized report, okay? So if you compare the whole thing here, um, it has this, uh, all the five patterns have the same content, but the way in which they are represented um, are different. So when you start with direct quotation, that's direct speech, right? Uh, the council woman said, because of unforeseen circumstances, will be revising the planned comple completion date of the project. So you see that there are quotation marks here, and whatever is said is reported uh, verbatim. In other words, whatever is said um, is reported as is said, right? So verbatim uh, means there's no change in the word. So it's reported as is, so verbatim, okay? But uh, once you get down to indirect speech, and I have here um, the description to paraphrase. So to paraphrase is to say the same thing in different words, right? So in this kind of version, you don't have the quotation marks. So it's not direct speech anymore. It's the wording of the reporter. So we have the council woman said that the project would be delayed. So you can see that the content, the project would be delayed. The content here keeps the original um, I mean, the original word, uh, not, not the original wording, but the original meaning, right? But a lot of words have been changed, and a lot of words have been cut out. Um, and this is kind of the, the gist or the content, the heart of the original wording, right? So we have indirect speech there, paraphrase. But we also have another um, type of um, reported speech. It's also indirect because it's not reported verbatim. But um, we have selective quotations here, meaning that the reporter just selects some words, not the not whole, not not the total, not the entirety, but just some words. Like here, the council woman admitted that the completion date of the project would have to be revised, so she just selects that word, and other parts are um, indirectly reported. Right. So maybe that person, the reporter things that that wording is important. That's why that just one particular word or two particular words are chosen, okay? And in the next one, you have summarized report. In this case, the reporter just summarizes, okay, the content. You see here, the project is experiencing s severe delays. In this case, there's no reporting word, like the console who said what, there's nothing like that, okay? but he or she is just, the reporter is just summarizing. The project is experiencing severe delays, okay? And um, finally, we have summarized report, the same thing, but the reporter just also puts in um, his or her presupposition, what um, his interpretation of the situation. Unreasonable delays have plagued the project. Here, unreasonable. So that's the uh, reporter's interpretation of the situation, right? Is never, is never in the original text. So he or she adds that. And then plague, 
metaphor, right? Um, is um, uh, metaphor of disease, right? So delay is like disease. So that's the interpretation of the reporter. So that's why I said that there is some presupposition, something that he or she adds uh, to the original content. So we'll look at these five patterns and uh, see how they could be uh, chosen in a text. Okay. Now, um, just for the basics, you know that we have uh, direct and indirect, right? Two, the two main kinds are direct and indirect and summarized. So for direct or quoted speech or thought, um, we, we, we use that term when a speaker's words or thoughts are reported verbatim, meaning that there is no change, just reporting as is, right? And when we talk about indirect or reported speech or reported thought, then um, the, the wording um, um, is changed in some way, okay? And this could include some paraphrase, okay? Um, his thought was that, in this case, you have thought, and then you don't have the reporting verb, but you have the be verb, so that's also indirect reporting. Or I hear, uh, Sophie is at Chelsea, I hear, so it's reported as heard. And then finally, the water is said to be excellent. You don't have the reporter, you have only the, um, Passive voice, the water is said by whom, I don't know, but to be ex excellent. That's not a reported clause, but that's like a small clause, right? Uh, to be excellent. So it's like the water is good. In other words, the water is excellent. So uh, you, you will have to notice that um, in text, you have to notice that these are all examples of indirect reporting. Whether it's heard, reported as heard, or whether it's like mm, the passive voice version without the speaker. Um, these are things that you already know, so I'll go through um, these uh, basics uh, quickly. Um, for uh, quotative frames, you can have like different kinds of verbs. We'll look at different kinds of verbs next time. He said, she asked, he complained, uh, she wailed, she whined, whatever. So you have a lot of things. And the choice of verb will tell you the choice, uh, uh, the interpretation of the speaker, okay? Uh, say it is like neutral, right? But if you say he complained that, something like that, or he announced, or he declared, um, those verbs sound more um, official, right? Uh, or powerful. And complementizer, that, if, um, or zero, um, you know that already. And then sometimes, again, the tenses have to be um, shifted, right? Have to be shifted, but not always, as we see in previous examples, right? Um, present tense to past tense. So in other words, just, uh, you don't have to memorize anything here, but um, in terms of tenses, uh, we use this term, they have to be backshift. They have to be backshifted. Backshifted meaning you go back, then you go back to past, right? If you, if you have the past tense, you go back to uh, Past perfect, something like that, right? So backshift one step. The reason is simple. The reason is not like, oh, it's a rule that you have to, to, to follow, but it's just common sense. Because when you report something, um, like Gyuho said, when you report something, this is what we call, the, the, the reporting verb is what we call the anchor the anchor verb, right? So when the anchor verb is in the past tense, so the original, whatever is said in the original, the verb here has to be backshifted because you have got a new anchor, which is past, right? So this has to go back one step. It's, it's common sense. Because when you, but, but when you just say it like this, uh, when you just have the direct speech, uh, the anchor here is, is not existent, doesn't exist, right? I mean, but when you report it, you have a new anchor, which is the anchor time is in the past, usually, right? Usually, because when we report something, um, it's something that already happened. So you have a new anchor. So this 
the original verb has to be backshifted. That's just common sense. You don't have to memorize anything, but it's like common sense. Just backshift because you have a new anchor, which is in the past. So you just do one step further, right? Uh, personal pronouns and so on, uh, these are all dictic terms that we study, right? Uh, I to he, you to, uh, you to her, whatever, right? Uh, she, whatever, um, depending on the case, whether you have the subject case or object case, what, um, and so on, and demonstrative, this to that, and so on. So you know this already. So um, just follow your, your intuition, okay, when you change. And um, again, tenses don't have to be backshifted always, but usually yes, um, especially when uh, what you report is, is real, is a fact, you don't need to change, um, you don't need to backshift the tense. The earth is round. If you report that, he proved that the earth is or was round. So both are optional, especially if they are still true at the time of reporting. Doesn't matter if the anchor ver verb is in the past tense. Um, the, um, the reported thing could be in the present or past. Okay? And um, there are some like, um, um, just uh, tiny points where people make um, the tenses here matter. Like if um, it's not a fact, if what is reported is not a fact, then you prefer to use the past tense. But that's like that's not like a rule that that native speakers have to follow. They can just choose to do whatever they want. Okay. And again, you can also have a mix between reported speech and also direct speech. So the rules that you ha have studied before are just guidelines, okay? Are just what people do in real life, but not necessarily what they, what they memorize to do. It's just their common sense, okay? Um, modals, if you have modals like could, would, might, whatever, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to do the uh, backshift, right? Because there's no backshifting possible and so on. Now, um, what I want to emphasize uh, today um, includes basic meanings. Why do people use direct speech sometimes? Why do people use indirect speech uh, other times, right? Um, um, indirect speech or indirect forms I used to mark the speech as more distant from the speaking event being reported. Why is it being uh, more remote or di being more distant? Because again, because the anchor verb, when you report something, is in the past tense, right? So it's uh, reported as being distant from the present situation. Um, the, a the effect of backshift um, creates a sense of remoteness, right? And um, Again, the, it, it moves the reporting, um, reported speaking event to another time and it marks that there's some distance between the time of reporting and the time of uh, what is said, okay? And when we use the reported speech, it's like we are telling, not, but when we use direct speech, it's like we are showing, okay? So the difference between telling and showing. Um, when you use direct speech, it's showing, right? Because you quote uh, the original wording directly as is, verbatim, right? And the indirect speech functions like narrative, so you tell a story, but direct speech functions like drama, right? So people really speak in like uh, real time, in other words, okay? And um, when you use direct speech, it's possible to uh, include many things that would dramatize uh, the speech form, okay? Um, you could uh, report uh, the manners uh, of expression, like he exclaimed, he gasped, he cried, and so on. Or voice quality, mutter, scream, or whisper, like to say it loudly or to say it um, like a whisper, and type of emotion, giggle, laugh, and so on <coughs> in direct speech, right? So like she whisper in this example, I have some good news. She whisper in a mischievous way. So you are describing the manner here, right? And that is also important. The uh, direct, uh, the exact wording. Or this one, what is it? He snapped impatiently. So you describe this, um, like like uh, what you see on TV, right? 
Uh, oh no, don't tell me you're pregnant. He wailed with a whining nasal sound, for example. So you could do, you could play with that, and you could um, report that this, right? That oh, this is this exact wording is important. Oh no, like that, right? It's an exclamation and so on. So that's why people choose to report, uh, choose uh, the direct speech to report things that they think is important to keep um, the same. Whereas indirect speech, uh, you do that because you just want to uh, keep the content. You want to report uh, only the important uh, message, right? Um, but you can also uh, play with the reporting frame here, too. The teacher announced that there would be extra homework announced, right? And then many students protested that they already had too much. Protest here um, can also tell you about the interpretation of the situation based on the reporter's um, opinion, right? And um, we said this already, that indirect forms are found when the reporter is more concerned with conveying an interpretation rather than the exact wording. Like the original is, I think your hair looks great. Okay, I think your hair looks great. And then the reported version, one of the reported version can be she said she liked my hair, or she thought my hair was terrific, right? So you, you can see that they are close, okay? The original and the indirect. She said she liked my hair, but to like, um, I mean, looks great, and to like, they're not exact same thing, right? But they are similar enough. So we might uh, misinterpret, right, somebody's original wording if we just only see the indirect speech version, right? Even though they are close enough, and even though the original meaning is in there somewhere, but it's not ex because it's not exact wording, right? Um, the meaning changes a little bit, right? Uh, the hair looks great, and she liked my hair. <laughs> they, they are close, but not the same. And this table is important because the next table is important because uh, it contains all the possible versions, and um, we have examples here. Like, um, if you look at the three versions, we have summarize, right? Summarize um, doesn't have to include the wording. Uh, indirect speech include the wording, the original wording, but is paraphrased. And direct speech includes the original wording in, exact, in the exact manner, right? And then the more distance, the more uh, the more distant will be towards this way. Distant <coughs> meaning uh, far away from the original wording, right? This is close, closest to the original wording, okay? And the more distance you have, the more control you have on the form and on the wording, right? So it's, if it's the summarized report, you can do anything because it's your summary, right? So you have more control on the form and on the content uh, towards this, this way. And then there are verbs that we usually use to summarize things with, like speak and talk. You, you don't have the word that. You cannot use speak and talk in the indirect speech or direct speech. You cannot, for example, say that he speaks that, or he spoke that, or he talked that, he talked if. You cannot say that. Because these are only used for summarization. Okay? And these, are, these two verbs are used for summarization. Or these verbs too, like uh, describe or discuss or gossip and so on. Say, say is different because say can be used for anything. Say can be here, summarize report. Say can be in indirect speech or say could be in direct speech. So say is kind of uh, multifunction, multifunctional. But speak, speak and talk, they are only here. So today we talked about three versions and we talked about different um, features of um, each version, right? So to sum up, we have direct reporting in which you keep the exact wording okay, as is. And we have indirect reporting in which you focus on, or the reporter focuses on the original content but not the form. Content is important but not the form. And summarize report, um, this 
shows the reporter's greatest power to control, right? And the reporter is in control of everything, and the words may not even be reported. Okay. Is, the inter uh, is the reporter's interpretation of the original uh, uh, situation. So that's what we'll focus on today. And uh, for the rest of today, I have uh, some examples to show you um, in terms of the, uh, to show you, um, and we'll focus on the details of each type. Um, between, um, between an interviewer and a writer, okay? A writer is Quentin Cripps, okay? And he explains how he came to publish or how he came to write his first book. So he will tell you about um, his before, the before situation, before he writes the book, okay? So um, this is his story, okay? So I'll have you identify, or we can do um, the first two paragraphs together. I'll have you identify the reporter's speech, and I'll have you identify the direct speech, okay? So um, this is the, so let's look at the first two paragraphs. Uh, the first paragraph says, I first met, so he's telling his story, okay, as to how he come to write the book that, that, that um, is already out. Um, I first met Mr. Carroll on the telephone, so that's not reported speech or anything, right? I had spoken words on the radio about my life, so he um, uh, was on the radio about his life before, right? Um, on the third program for Philip O'Connor, a publisher. And then, a, uh, I'm sorry, a publisher, Mr. Kimber, telephoned me and said I should write a book. So in this case, in this last sentence, you have a mm, direct or reported? Reported, right? So you can underline, uh, Mr. Kimber said I should uh, write a book. So that's re uh, reported speech, right? So that's the uh, subject. And then said I would write a book. That's the... Uh, indirect speech, okay? So you can write down indirect speech there. Okay? So this is easy, okay? Now, in the second paragraph, we have, he said that if I wrote a 2,000-word synopsis of my life story, he would let me know whether he would give me a contract. So someone is interested, okay? Someone is interested in his life story. Now, that person said that if he wrote, if the, the, the writer here, wrote a 200, uh, 2,000 word synopsis. Synopsis is like a summary. Summary of my life story. He would let me know whether he would give me a contract, right? So he would have to read it first and then decides whether he will publish the book or not. Now, what do you have here? Is it direct or indirect? It's easy, right? So it's indirect, right? So we have the framing, he said, uh, he said that, that's the framing. And then we have the uh, reported um, speech there if I wrote a 2,000 word synopsis and so on, okay? So that's also indirect. Now, uh, in the third paragraph, what do we have? When he read my 2,000 words, he fainted dead away, right? Uh, and said he could, not never, he could never publish a book. Do you have any reporting here? We do, right? Which is? and said he could never publish a book, okay? So you can um, underline he here, which is the subject, and then said he could never publish a book, okay? Which is an indirect speech uh, form, right? So we have he, and then said that, said, and then know that, right? Know that. And then we, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, finished yet, right? It was too scandalous. He, wa he could never publish a book. It was too scandalous. It, meaning the book, right? The book was too scandalous, meaning it involves a lot of um, infamous stories, things that people don't like, things that are popular in bad ways. And then I was describing all this to the art masters at Maystone College. A man called Citizen Kane, Bob Kane, said, I have my spies and I will put them out. 
right? In this case, you have another uh, speech representation, right, which is direct speech. So we have the guy, Bob Kane, right, said, and then I have my spies and I'll put them out, okay? So that's your direct speech reporting. Because you see, it's direct speech because you see um, the quotation marks. And he came back with the name Donald Carroll. He said that if I gave him the 2,000 words that had frightened Mr. Kimber and a transcript of what I had said on the radio and photographs of myself, he would undertake to sell the book. Now he is interested, right? So in this case, we have a long indirect speech reporting, right? Because we have he said that, and then whatever else is after that is reported speech. Okay. And then I telephoned Mr. Carroll, and he said, you had better come and see me. So I crossed the river from Chelsea to Putney. Right? So another speech representation, which is um, direct speech. Okay, so this is easy, okay, because this is basic. Now, um, the next thing that I want to, to, to look at is why do you think the speaker chooses direct speech at specific points in the account, right? You see that there are maybe two, two instances or two examples of direct speech, right? And other things are indirect speech, right? Um, you could, uh, we'll see that the storyteller here uh, brings the characters to life. In other words, he creates vividness, right? Vividness, uh, vividness, meaning like the fresh, uh, fresh picture. He creates vividness of the story by putting words in people's mouth. Meaning like this, Carol, uh, so I telephoned Mr. Carl and he said, you had better come and see me. So that's direct speech, right? And you can see that he followed that with uh, his reason. So I crossed the river from Chelsea to Put Putney, right? He could have chosen to do this indirectly, meaning the indirect speech version. But no, he chose this kind of wording. You better come and see me, right? The, the original wording, so that he could furnish more detail uh, with, with just his story. Okay. You can see that he just uses the direct speech in places that he thinks um, are important, like this, right? This place and also this place. In other places, uh, especially uh, when he talks about the guy that is not interested in his stuff or the guy that will not publish his stuff, he just reports the wording um, like using indirect speech. Okay. But he just wants to furnish the details, like more vivid details um, at places where um, are important, okay. where he thinks are important. Now, that's just... Um, an introduction. Now, this is what I want to uh, present to you. Um, the second question, the second uh, example that we'll look at uh, includes two uh, accounts, okay? They are different. One account is here, and the second is account is here. In the first account, in the first account, uh, the original speaker, the original account, the original speaker talks about what she likes about her new home is a home with a garden. So she, she's talking about what, what she likes in her home. Now, on your right-hand side, you have one prime, meaning it's a reported version of the original account. So somebody tells a story about what, what that person says about her house, okay? So you have that. And then in the second one, in the second one, um, the, the original speaker is talking about how to take care of small plants, how to take care of small plants, okay? And in the right-hand version, in the right-hand version, you have the reported account of the original wording, okay? What I want you to do is to compare uh, the two versions, the original version and the reported version, okay? And see what has been changed, okay? 
what's different in the two versions. Okay? Um, so you have to start out with the original version first, right? So let's look at the original version in number one. So she's talking about what she likes about her new house with a garden and uh, compare that with the reported account. So I have you uh, work um, maybe for about five to 10 minutes and then we'll come back and look at these. So you can underline what's different, right? So sometimes, because sometimes in real life, when you report somebody's uh, uh, words, sometimes you misinterpret, right? Sometimes you misinterpret the original wording, the original intention of the speaker, or you might uh, organize, you might organize the order of the wording differently. That's possible because our memory is not perfect, right? So sometimes we misreport people's wording. Sometimes we misunderstand the original meaning. Sometimes we just change. We add things, we delete things always, right? Because we cannot just reproduce other people's wording exactly in real life. Never, never. There's never direct speech, right, per se. So can you compare what has been uh, changed and what may be added? What may have been added, what may have been deleted, and what may have been reorganized, and what may have been reinterpreted. And we'll talk about those things um, after 10 minutes, okay? So I'll walk around to help you. Okay, let's compare. Let's compare. Let's compare the first account, okay? So what's different? What might be different between the two versions that you have noticed? Anything that you see that uh, is different? Of course, everything is different because it's indirect, right? But what might be um, the things that stand out? If you look at this, we have, she said what she liked about living in Tottenham is having a garden. Now, where is that from? In Tottenham, right? In Tottenham, where is that from? It's not in the original, right? So it must have been added, right? Because it's not in the original. Okay, it's not missing because the original doesn't have it. So if we start from this being the original, then in Tottenham here is, is what has been added, okay? And sometimes in real life, okay, we add things, right, when the original doesn't have. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not okay because it can cause misunderstanding. But in this case, it might be okay because this is just um, one more detail, okay? So this, the, reported, the, the reporter just adds something from his or her background knowledge, okay? So he or she knows that, you know, the original speaker maybe is living in Tottenham, so that's why she, he or she adds it, right? So this is different, so that's one thing. And then uh, having a garden, she got lots of birds, so that's in the original, right? We have got loads of birds, loads or lots of birds, right? So the, the content uh, is retained here. I saw eight wrens the other night, and we got robins. So wrens and robins are examples of uh, birds. But here, what we have, she got loads, lots of birds, and she saw a family of wrens there. How do you know that it's a family? She, <laughs> she saw eight, but how do you know that they are a family, right? Or well, family here could be like a group, too. But it could also mean like uh, parent, birds, and so on too. But it's not in the original, or we, we are not sure. Okay. And we have got robins and blackbirds, and these are not in the reported version. The examples of robins and blackbirds are not there. But there's only wrens, right? And what else? Uh, and it's good being able to hang out washing outside in the summer. In other words, they don't use the um, the dryer machine, right? And they like to, maybe, they, they like maybe, they like to hang the laundry outside, right? So that uh, the laundry gets dry from the sun. But here, what's reported is, she likes hanging out washing. She likes hanging out washing, it's like hanging around. So being around the house and washing things. This, this might be different, okay? This might be different. And she said they like having barbecues, the last one, okay? Uh, she said they like having barbecues. This is in the beginning of the uh, original, 
right? So the organization is different. But if you see here, uh, what I like about living here is the garden. So she likes the garden, okay? Where we can barbecue, where we have barbecues, okay? So she, she may have barbecues sometime, and because there's a garden, she's able to do that. But what's reported is, and she said they like having barbecues. That's a little bit off, right, from the original. Because the original doesn't say that they like, they can, they may have barbecues, but not they like, right? So it's a little bit off, but still, um, we say that it's not like the opposite, okay? But it's a little bit off from the uh, original. So that's what happened when people report uh, wording, right? When people report words for, of other people. So we have to be careful, okay? Because <laughs> the original message is never there. It is there, but it's not the original wording, okay? So things might get changed or might be added or might be deleted. Um, let's look at the second one. It's a bit like uh, having a bit, well, uh, she's talking about how to take care of young plants, right? It's a bit like having a baby. When it's small, you have got to really look after it. You have got to keep it warm and protect it. So here, he said when they are very young, they have to be treated like babies. So that's like, okay, right? Because uh, they give, uh, the original speaker gives that example of baby. So we have baby here, okay? and take it great care of them. You know babies have to be treated very carefully when they are very young. <laughs> what is that? You know babies have to be treated very carefully uh, when they are very young. So that's not in the original, in the sense that here you know, starting from you know to, to there. That's the interaction between the storyteller or the reporter and the listener, right? So you know there uh, tells you that she's, she's making sure that the listener is understanding, okay, uh, the reporting, uh, the reported event. So that's not the original. That's like he or she is making uh, sure that the listener is uh, understanding or is following him or her. And then we have, I know he said like, I know he said, like, um, babies easily get the flu, and then you can put the plants out more easily when they get a bit older, right? So, baby easily get the flu. Is that in the original or not? Not really, right? If you compare the original, in the original we have, but then as it grows bigger, the baby, it's able to throw off the cold, the odd cold of flu. So. In other words, they got like maybe a stronger immune system, for example, right? But here, um, babies easily get the flu. It's not in the original. It's a little bit off, but not totally off, okay? So, and then what else we have? And then you can put the plants out more easily when they get a bit older, right? So the organization of the information is a little bit different too, okay? So from these two examples, from these two examples, um, we can answer some questions here. In general terms, uh, what information does each reporter focus on or summarize or leave out? We talked about these, right? So Tottenham, for example, in Tottenham, so has been added, right, for example. And then um, focus on uh, real examples, some of examples like Wren, right, the, the, the example Wren. But the first reporter leaves out robins and uh, blackbirds, right? And the second reporter focuses on the comparison uh, between young plants and babies. So he or she focuses on that, right? And are the reporters concerned more with interpreting what was said or with reporting factually? we have to say they are more concerned with reporting factually, right? Because we say that uh, maybe 90% of what was reported is correct. There are some like um, details that might be a little bit off, but not totally off. So they are more concerned with reporting um, the content, reporting the uh, original content, but not the word.
and in fact, we cannot perfectly uh, report what other people say anyway. Right? Number three, do the reporters change the tenses that were used in the original? What do you think? Yes, right? Um, so the original here, we have both the mix, a mix between the present, present tense, what I like, and then the past tense I saw. It rains the other night. So it's normal, right? Because you talk about past things, you use past tense. That's normal. But when you report, you have the anchor, the new anchor frame, which is uh, the past tense. So um, strictly speaking, or uh, grammatically speaking, people, like, people are likely to change the tense, right? Backshift the tense. Now we see the backshifting here. She liked, and so on, right? But um, here, uh, she likes hanging out washing, and she said they like having barbecue. You see there? There's no change. Even though the anchor is the past tense, there's no change there. And as I said, rules that you have been taught are just the guidelines. And in real life, it's not 100% that people would change, according to, change their tenses according to the rules that you have been taught. So real life language is always different from what is written down in grammar books. And in the second one, um, in the second one, too, right? He said when they are very young, they have to be treated like babies. So no change at all. They are very young, not they were very young. So were is possible and are is possible. As I said, in real life, people just don't care. Okay? <laughs> and in fact, in the second one, there's no change of tense, right? Uh, and then you can put, I know he said like babies. Uh, easily get the flu, there, there's no change. He said, past tense, there's no change in the verb. Okay? So real life is different from grammar books. Um, now, uh, we come to the last one. So maybe we can do only the first text. Um, the first text, again, reports um, a conversation um, between um, an interviewer and a professor. So a professor is telling a story um, as to why his class is successful, okay? And um, this is what he says, okay? So we have, I asked why the student seems so willing to communicate and take part in informal discussion. So he, the reporter is reporting the conversation, okay? So what I want you to do here is to underline, underline the verb of reporting, okay? Underline the reporting frame, like I asked, so you underline that, okay? So how many verbs of reporting do we have? So I'll give you just two minutes to do this for the first one. Okay, I think this is uh, easy enough, so uh, you guys don't need a lot of time. So we have asked, the first one, right? And we have, he also said, right? So that's the reporting, another reporting verb. He also said that they were used to writing in class and working uh, in groups, right? Now. The third one is when other lecturers said, right? So this is like double reporting, right? It's double reporting because the reporter reports what the successful professor said and then the successful professor report what other lecturers said. So it's like double reporting. <coughs> Would never accept this. You see, accept is in the the quotation marks, so that's selective, right? So that's uh, selective wording. So it's like a mix between indirect and direct speech. Only select one word, because that word might be what the reporter thinks is very important, okay? And then this one is what I want to draw your attention to. He seems surprised at the question. So maybe that's the summarized report. That's the summarized report. Because the professor, so this is the reporter's version, right? The professor that he interviewed might be saying, oh, really? Like that, right? And then what got reported is he seems surprised. He seems to be surprised at the question. So this is like 
So oh really translates into he seems surprised. Right? So that's what we call the summarized version. It may be, it may be. Okay. So in other words, if I was talking to someone and I said, Chin Jayo, like that, people might report my saying as, oh, Chris does seem surprised, right? He didn't think his students were very different from those in other faculties or university. Faculties is like uh, School of Humanities, School of Engineering, and so on. So we have think as a reporting. This is not reporting words, but reporting thought, right? But how, how could you report thought, right? So that's indirect. Because uh, a thought is what happens in somebody's head. So when we report thought, it's like you have some kind of access to his brain. So we'll come back on uh, Wednesday and continue with reporting, reported speech. So you read text two at home. <laughs>